just like everyone predicted, the Rockies and A's gave us one of the best series of the year so far. You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, A's fans, and welcome to Locked On A's, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast where we talk about your Oakland A's all year long. I am your very mellow host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. And with us today is yet another Paul Francis. I didn't realize I didn't need to put my lower third on because we've already got our boxes on. But I'm going to keep it calm today. Along is another Paul Francis, and he is the host of Locked on Rockies. Please introduce yourself. Sully, uh, I'm going to try to keep it calm, but uh, I don't know if I can keep it calm. But for the A's fans out there, I am Paul Francis Holden, not Paul Francis Sullivan. Uh, you can call me Paul. That's fine. Uh, I am the host of the Locked On Rockies podcast. I've been doing this for my fourth season now, and uh, it's, it's something. Yep. <laughs> and watching the Rockies is something. Uh, you can follow us. Very mellow, laid back podcast. You can follow us at Locked On A's on Twitter or on Instagram. I am your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, or whatever the hell it's called now, and <laughs> Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And today's episode it has been very gently brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's a $150 with any $5 bet, visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. What is your handle? I am at Paul Holden 33, or you can follow the show. L O Rockies. Um, I'm poking fun <laughs> at uh, one of my best listeners out there. Um, and, uh, uh, and someone who I, who, who is an everyday listener to the show and um and uh wait, where is his where's his comment i mean uh uh one of my one of my one of my finest listeners has wrote a whole bunch of things on, on from yesterday's show saying stop yelling at us stop screaming at us and <laughs> and i i went back and i said i i don't i uh i i don't know what you're talking about and um and where, where's where's his comment he was he just uh did he delete all of them i don't know maybe he did um, but, uh, yeah, it was, uh, uh, was saying to stop yelling and screaming. And, uh, I'm like, uh, I don't realize, I didn't realize I was yelling and screaming and I re-listened to the show and I'll go like, I, I don't, I don't recall yelling or screaming. Even when I listened to it, I, I raised my voice a few times out of enthusiasm, mm -hmm. but, uh, I'm trying to keep it mellow and calm. And so naturally we have a couple of absolutely <laughs> out of our mind. Uh, uh, okay. Zach Mitchell writes, I'm glad someone's keeping calm. What a crazy game that was. And here's the deal, Zach. You could say that about all three of the games that were played between Colorado and Oakland. Oh, my God. What an absolutely banana series we just sat through. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean it, it was it was crazy because it's it's just the amount of what happened. I mean, it was the Rockies jumping ahead in all three games and then being basically shut out until the end. And then of course the finale, not only is it the wildness and extra innings, but the Rockies of all teams are the one that gets a Miller, the one, the, you know, yeah. of all the teams to be the ones to finally crack the case of this guy that in the first game of this series, uh, I don't have any any clue how you hit this dude when he can just come up and consistently pump 100, 101, 103 miles per hour right at your face. And then here the Rockies are and, and they they bring things back. It's enjoyable. But but as Rockies fans, it's infuriating. I mean, this this series is everything wrong with the Colorado Rockies this season encapsulated in a series. I mean, three quality starts from your pitchers and you and you lose this series, especially when you mix in the fact that 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 all of them put you in a position to win. You you were leading most of the game and the bullpen can't get you a simple amount of outs. It's it's absolutely unacceptable 
for the Colorado Rockies to lose this series. It, it, it's, it's, right. it's, I mean, it's not that surprising, especially for folks that, you know, I mean, we're, we're talking A's Rockies here. We're not talking the juggernauts. We're talking two teams that are very familiar with baseball teams that struggle, but to blow two four run leads in the finale of a game after you get a chance of going up against it, get you, you do damage against the best closer in baseball this season. It's unacceptable. And the problem with the Rockies is no one's going to be held accountable. There's, I don't think that nothing's going to change in Colorado because of this. There's going to be, they're going to trot the same lineups up. It, it Bud Black is going to be secure in his job. So is Scott Foster in his pitching job, but that bullpen performance from the Rockies in this series, I, you can't even, there's not enough disappointing adjectives to assign to it because that's, it's these are pros, man. They got to be better than that. Plain and simple. Uh, well, you know, let's actually let's break down. We're recording this in the evening. Actually, we're this is a live stream um, on here. It's on Thursday, the 23rd of May. Let's just go over this weird game that took place on Thursday afternoon in front of friends and family in Oakland. Um, like once again, out of the gate, the rocks. I mean, the rocks are up two nothing before you know, the guy playing Stomper has on his elephant costume. Uh, mm -hmm. Doyle gets the double. They're up to nothing. McMahon gets uh, – McMahon uh, forces it to be 3 nothing. Uh, and by the time we get to the, the sixth inning, it's 4 nothing. And I have the game on in my classroom, and I'm thinking, like, okay, this is just it. And and I, and I will get – I will talk a little bit about – yesterday's game was so enraging. And I talked about it in Lockdown and MLB the other day where I'm like – why can't anyone bunt a runner to third when all you need is one run to win a game? Man. Bunt them to third. Like, why? Why is this such a difficult? If if they bunt to third, bunting chaos can happen. They could throw the ball away. Like seventy percent of the time, you'll have the winning run at third with one out. Yeah, which you would ask a genie for. And if we have the stupid Manfred man, you know, we should have that. But I'm thinking to myself, okay, this series is lost. This series is lost, and then. The A's seem to only be able to score with homers. <laughs> right. And it it's amazing because it feels like the A's have about 1,000 homers this year. And I looked up and I thought, J.D. Davis must be close to 11, 12 homers by now. That was his fourth. Right. I don't understand why they still have these low home run totals. And it seems like the, all they score is homers. But um, here's an amazing thing. They're still losing at the bottom of the ninth. And Daz Cameron who hasn't played in the major leagues in over a year. I had no clue Daz Cameron was on the roster. And few people are following the A's as closely as I have this season so far. He homered in the ninth inning, which meant for the third straight game, the A's tied the game in either the eighth or ninth inning. He homers. And then... You know, and then Geloff single. Then you know, there both teams exchanged a man for man run in the tenth, and then the eleventh, Miller, who was unhittable, suddenly the roof caved in. Like it, it was bound to happen. He was right. bound to have a bad game, and you saw him that first game when he pitched against them. It did. It, it, it didn't look fair. Right. Insane. I, I, it doesn't. I mean, when you see that guy coming out, and that's what I thought when the when the eleventh. I mean. The the A's have this incredible weapon that if you are in a one run ball game, if they like they had in the in the first game, if they have right. a one run lead, they have won. They have won the game in the ninth because that guy is so man. Talk about it being already hard to hit. He throws a slider that's deadly in the high nineties, and then he can pump you hundred and three on the hands. Like that's nuts. And but for the Rockies and for Chris Bryant of all people to be the guy that gets the hit. To, to, to start things off against Miller in the 10th to be the first run before the 11th even happens is right, right. crazy because Chris Bryant's batting, batting sub 200, just got off yeah. the IL this week. Yeah. And then, you know, Cave got the RBI. Right. And then you got like, okay, it's a Manfred run run. Okay, fine. Then Doyle, like, oh boy. And then Brendan Rogers. Uh, drove in. I, I think it was a basis clearing double or like yeah, it was two, a two or RB, It was a two yeah. RBI single. Oh yeah. Well, either way, it was, it was it was nine to five, which is great if you're watching a Dolly Parton Shane Fonda film, but not great if you want to, if you look at it. And I said, all right, well, this is they're done. This is it. This you know they you know and and I started thinking about the, the what could have been here, what could have been there, and all right, they made it nine six fine. And then 
Toro got when Toro got the hit and made it nine seven exactly. with nobody out. That's when I sat up and yep. said, "Ooh, because uh, the Rockies aren't exactly the 2015 Royals in terms of bullpen depth right now." And it's like, "Ooh, you could make up two runs." And uh, JJ Blade kept the doctor away with. I thought it was his 45th home run, but apparently it's his seventh. And uh, and then let's talk about it, Paul. Let's talk about it. We're, we'll go hit a commercial in a second uh, because. But do you want? Let's tease you right there. There's right. something we need right. to talk about because I, uh, I I I I I I I don't <laughs> understand something. I don't care if you are the Rockies or not. I I I I I just don't understand something. Sully, what I do understand, though, is spring has sprung, and that means spring cleaning. Whether that means stocking up on cleaning supplies or swapping out your winter clothes for new spring clothes, make sure you're using Ibotta and get real cash back with every purchase. Yes, that's right. Cash back with every purchase and if you're getting ready to build your spring wardrobe or gearing up for baseball season as you get ready to maybe hit the road for a baseball road trip who knows ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing join the over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop from over 2700 brands and retailers including all your favorite grocery stores lowe's macy's Sephora, Best Buy, and more. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta by using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. That's the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register after you download the Ibotta app on the App Store or Google Play Store for free, and you can use that code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. Order supplies from the website that's made for skilled trades. Find thousands of parts from hundreds of brands in just a couple of clicks at SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com gives you 24-7 access to a huge selection of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies with fast delivery anywhere in the United States. Need help with an order? Get industry-leading after-sales service from their friendly and knowledgeable support team. And guess what? Here's a miracle. You could talk to a real person every time. And thanks to the great SupplyHouse.com inventory, you can get great news for plumbers, technicians, and contractors because being a pro has its perks. Trade industry professionals can join their Trade Master program for free shipping and serious discounts on every order. Over a hundred thousand pros already trust the Trade Master program to deliver results. Apply for your membership today and get a competitive edge on every order at supplyhouse.com slash TM. Save money time when you order online. Order plumbing, HVAC, electrical supplies from supplyhouse.com. Real people, real service. Supply House. Dot com. Hey, where is your hub for getting all of your baseball, sports, football, hockey, whatever you follow? Where do you get your stories from? Well, you got to go to Locked On Sports today, the 24-7 streaming channel available to you on YouTube and the Amazon Fire TV channels. If you're sick of the yelling, if you don't want to listen to all of those People fired up about God knows what on those things. You can check out Locked On Sports today, 24-7 sports streaming coverage. And Sully, did you know that you can get all your Oakland A's and Colorado Rockies play-by-play -play action on Sirius XM and the Sirius XM app all season long? I did. You know what? I, I was now years old when I found that out. Now, of there course, some people think there's a lot of yelling from this show, but today we're bringing it down. Okay. Let me just, let me ask you a question. Okay. Um, Let's. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to FanDuel and say I'm gonna put all my money on the A's and Rockies to meet in the World Series. That'd be a dumb bet, right? Mm -hmm. That'd yeah. be pretty dumb. Okay. Right. So these are not two teams that Ken Burns is gonna follow in the next installment 
of baseball, all right? But they are major leaguers. They made it to the show. Okay. I will never, ever understand how any major league team can ever lose on a bases loaded walk, especially with two outs. It's it's plain and simple, Sully. It's inexcusable. It's 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 another terrible loss and a long list of bad losses for this Rockies team and of and a Rockies team that just can't get stop making bad headlines. This to be this game's an embarrassment. I mean, game three is plain and simple an embarrassment on a team that just won seven straight and then yeah. lost to their a, a team that dominates them in the Giants. But they had ample opportunities not only to win this series but sweep this series and get themselves back on track before they face now three of the best teams in baseball. The Rockies followed this series up now by playing the Phillies, and then they play the Guardians, and then they play the Dodgers. You can't afford to miss out on opportunities like this. When your pitcher gives you a quality start, when you have three quality starts, when you have a, the lead in three games in the ninth inning, it's got to be game over. It's got to the, the amount of walks the Rockies bullpen gives up is unacceptable. The amount of hits the Rockies bullpen gives up, especially home runs, is unacceptable. Justin Lawrence and Tyler Kinley have been nothing short of a disappointment this season of two of my players that I was really excited about. Two players that I thought were going to take a step forward and be leaders on this Rockies team have unfortunately been key parts in disastrous moments. The Rockies had a five-run lead against the Miami Marlins, and they blew that lead. The Rockies, when playing against the worst teams in baseball, have embarrassed themselves and shown why they have earned the title of one of the worst teams in baseball. And it's just so infuriating because you're right, Sully. They are pros. And, and, and a walk in that situation and the walks that the bullpen have given up in a lot of situations in this game, in this series and in and, and this season are unacceptable, especially when you're led by a supposed pitcher-focused manager. I want to get back to that. The bases are loaded. There are two outs, okay? Now, you've already blown a four-run lead, a lead in the ninth inning, and a massive lead against a, a can't-miss all-star closer, okay? You've already blown all of those. Now you've loaded the bases, and you've done an intentional walk to load the bases as well, I will note. There's three balls... No strikes to wait. Who 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 was the who did, who did it was Soderstrom was was the batter, okay, and uh, and at that point I can't remember who was pitching for the. It wasn't um, Coke got no. It was Peter Lambert who got to, who, who were put who was put into the game in that final okay. bat because Matt Coke couldn't do anything. Right. Yeah. The fourteenth caller was in there pitching. Okay. Now, at this point, if it's three and zero, oh, you have to. If anything, lob it right down the middle of the plate. Lollipop because, it. Because, okay, the worst case scenario, and I've said this before, the worst case scenario is a walk-off grand slam. And at that point, you tip your hat. You say, you, you beat us by hitting that grand slam. Of course, he could get a hit. Of course, he could get a bloop, a gork. To, 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 to paraphrase Crash Davis and Bull Durham, the grounder with eyes, all the different things that could happen. However, he could take it for strike one. He could pop up. He could swing and miss. He could ground out. He can hit sharply like there's a couple of great plays that the second baseman made in some key moments. He, someone could make a diving catch. There's two outs. If you leap over the fence and bring it back, it's the end of the inning. You have to lob it down the middle of the plate, if nothing else. I know that's not ideal, but 3-0 bases loaded, tie game, bottom of the – was it bottom of the 11th? You, there is zero excuse because if you don't lob it down the heart of the plate, then the game's over – and you've handed it to them. You have to make the other team win at that point. You have to make Soderstrom, who has been okay, but he's not exactly freaking Shohei Otani at the plate. Throw him a strike and make him do something. If he right. pops up to the catcher, you're moving on. And guess what? They've already burnt through uh, Miller and all their great pitchers. And then it just turns into... Clearly, I mean, it's going to be the mascots pitching in any moment, but still, at least you give yourself a shot. Yeah. 
Exactly. I, I, it's, there's too many of these types of examples for the Colorado Rockies it, it, this season and beyond. I mean, this, this loss is, I mean, it, it, it just comes down to a, a moment where it's so frustrating, but I'm at a point where it's how frustrated and what is the point of really being frustrated because I don't expect change with this Rockies team. I don't expect this to change the mindsets of the Rockies. And and I, I just want to set the stage here for, for A's fans who have been going through it and going through some miserable things. The oh, Colorado yeah. Rockies set a new major league record for most cons- or most games trailed consistently to start a season. They broke a record from 1910. The St. Louis Blues or Bears or whatever the heck their names were. Browns, the Rockies Browns. now have the record. They trailed in every single game until earlier this month at a certain point in the season. They had the worst start in franchise history following up their worst season in franchise history. They are paying Chris Bryant a ton of money to be on the IL and bat under 200. They have a bullpen that can't finish games. They have starting pitchers that no one's heard of that are that have actually put up some of the best performances that the Rockies could have asked for, but are spoiled because this Rockies offense can't do anything. How many times do you think the Rockies struck out against this dominant A staff? Two games in which they have double-digit strikeouts. You throw an off-speed pitch to this Rocky stat or team with two strikes, they're going to swing and miss. This team is, man, it, it's so it's really tough because I thought they turned a corner in the winning streak because I thought they'll take one off the chin in San Francisco because that's just history. San Francisco has the Rockies' number. That's just how it's been for years at this point. But right. you're playing Oakland, and you start every game with the lead, something you haven't done all season long and then you blow every single lead late in the game. Mixed in with your offense going stagnant after jumping out early. There's no excuse for the Rockies' offense to be as bad as it was and having as many runners left in scoring position even in the win in the, in the game. And Ace fans can probably relate to a lot of the stuff that too because they can sit there and say the same thing. They probably look at this Rockies team and say, that's a team we should have swept. That's a team that's worse than us. And Paul, Hol- Paul Francis Holden said all of those things. When we come back, we're going to talk about how Paul Francis Sullivan almost said exactly everything that you just said. Well, I think it's time to talk to our friends over at FanDuel. I bet if you had gone to FanDuel and bet on the Rockies on every single game when they had four nothing leads, you thought you'd be able to clean up on that one. You thought that all the easy bets right there. Uh, yeah, it seemed like, you know, and, and it's a coin toss and it seemed like a good one, but talk about being betrayed. <laughs> well, it's a winner take all time in the NBA and the NHL. Is it going to be Edmonton? Is it going to be Dallas? Is it going to be New York? Is it going to be Florida for the Stanley Cup? And is it going to be Boston, Indiana? Is it going to be Dallas or Minnesota? I don't know who's going to win, but FanDuel is giving you a chance to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, it's America's number one sports book. FanDuel. Hey, this is a reminder that Locked On has created the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day. With the local extras of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channel app. Yeah, I mean, the A's just came off of a stretch where they went eight days without a lead. Not a win, a lead. Eight days where that not at no point did they look up at the scoreboard and say, "Hey, we're up." Um, and the, they came home. They were playing a Rocky scene that was pretty hot. You know, got stubbed their toe in San Francisco. But I think they got to turn things around. They got to just stop the bleeding. They got to just stop the bleeding a little bit. And when they fell behind in that first game, and they came back. They won the, on the Toro homer. I'm thinking, okay, they're still a little too reliant on homers, but at this point, we'll take what we can get. Then that that second game, where they would not bunt a runner over, even though one run would have won the game in the 10th or 11th, everyone swing in for the fences, swing for the fences, driving me out of my mind. And today, I'm like going like, oh, God, you can't get that one more run on. If the A's had lost, 
you would be like, all right, we walked away with a series win. And I would have been like, this is, this is, this team, the wheels have totally come off. They can't win these games. I'll tell you a moment that uh, in the one game that Colorado won in this series, which is the middle game, um, I'll tell you a moment that I had that completely flummoxed me uh, for positively for the A's, which was Austin Gomber was pitching a great game. Right. The, the A, he didn't walk a batter. He let up one run on a solo homer. So they didn't rally off of him at all. Other than the one solo homer he let up to, uh, wait, who the heck did he let up the home run to? He let it up to uh, uh, Blade. I mean, once again, I'm convinced he has 50 home runs. He has seven. Um, but Gomber, they didn't rally off of him. He only let up four hits that wasn't the Blade homer, didn't walk a batter, struck out six, and only threw 90 pitches. Okay. He was, and he got, he wiggled out of a, a, a jam at one point, but the A's couldn't touch him. The A's could not touch him. And in came Jalen Beeks hiding the ball as he, as he's in his pitching. And I mean, the, the, the couple of flare hits and everything, but he let up two hits and a walk and blew the lead and made Gomber have a, uh, a no decision. And I remember thinking like, why not have Gomber come out and pitch the ninth? Like they, they, they were, they had a long bullpen game the night before and, would it kill them to say, hey, let's have a completely rest and ready bullpen, knowing you have a day game after a night game and they can't hit Gomber? And he is, he is only at 90 pitch. At least have him start the ninth. I'd understand if he started the ninth and he let up a double, okay, we'll bring someone in. But I was sitting there when I saw he wasn't coming out. I thought, good. Yeah. It, it, I think it's a, it's a moment there again where – you know, I know the complete game isn't something we happen, and and the Rockies did try to trot out a complete game, and it and it bit them earlier this season. But Austin Gomber has solidified himself with one of the best starts in Rockies history through ten starts. He he's he is one of seven pitchers now in Rockies history through ten starts to start a season to have a sub three ERA. Why not give him the chance, especially when you know you. You can't trust your bullpen. The bullpen, this isn't the first series that this has happened to the Rockies. You you do not have a closer. You lost Daniel Bard to injury, and Tyler Kinley and Justin Lawrence have not risen to the role. Victor Vodnik has a, a, an argument to be there. We saw Victor Vodnik be successful right. in the finale in game three. He, he reached 100 miles an hour a couple of times, but... With the Rockies not having the stability and the consistency in the bullpen, it has to be absolutely maddening if you're Austin Gomber, especially because when you mix in that Austin Gomber season has also been marred by the fact that he's got no run support. Uh, it, it, these these starting pitchers are doing exactly, especially Cal Quantrill and Austin Gomber, two of the pitchers that the, the A's saw in the series. They've done their job this year. The offense hasn't done their job, and the bullpen hasn't done their job to help make the Rockies play games. They don't play a complete game of baseball. They don't play nine innings of baseball. They 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 fall flat, and and you you can't be consistently counting on guys coming out of your bullpen with over five ERAs, especially in the eighth and the ninth of close ball games. These last five games on BaseballReference.com, the single race website, the History Planner. This is Austin Gomber. Uh, he let up seven runs. He let he pitched seven innings. Didn't walk a batter, uh, lost. Uh, then he pitched six innings, didn't let up a run, no decision, and a one nothing loss. Then he pitched six and two thirds innings, let up one earned run in six and two thirds innings, no decision. Uh, then he pitched six innings, shut out ball. Hey, he got a win. And then the other night he pitched eight innings, one run, no walks, no decision. So those are five good solid starts from a team that isn't exactly the 1995 Braves and his record in that time is one and one quality starts. The Rockies lose quality starts from starters. That that doesn't make any sense. If you were to say the Rockies are getting quality starts, consistent quality starts from their starting rotation. And you look at the names in the starting rotation of the Rockies right now, and then they, you follow it up with their losing. It, it just proves more examples that the team is broken. The team is busted. This this. Something is wrong with the Rockies in the fact that it, it's not only are they bad, they just aren't 
prepared. They're not ready. They yeah. don't adjust. It, 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 and, and it's from the top down. It is, it is an, it's not an issue just with the players. It is an issue with the coaching staff. It's an issue with the front office. It's an issue with management. The Rockies are broken. For, they look underprepared in every game. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I don't know a ton about the A's, and I'll come completely clean. And, and, and you do. Pardon my, you do. Pardon my ignorance you do. Here to the A's fans here. But this isn't a team I expect the Rock. The Rockies shouldn't have two games in which they have double-digit strikeouts against this team. Miller isn't play, isn't throwing nine innings or anything like that. It's unacceptable for the Rockies to continue to strike out at this rate and lose games like this, mixed in with the fact that, like I mentioned earlier, a lack of accountability because this will not bring change to the Colorado Rockies. It's just going to be the class. I'm going to hear the Bud Blackism is that's baseball. Well, hey, let me just show you that someone out here is appreciating us and completely embodies an A's Rockies crossover. Do you want to hear it? It's Leave It to Baker. Grew up in the Bay, but now I'm watching you guys live from Castle Pines, Colorado at work. Don't let your boss see that, Leave It to Baker. <laughs> Don't let your boss see that you're watching these two clowns. He's working the night shift. That's hey, look at, look at his avatar. He's got a late show with David Letterman uh, yeah. uh, mug, so he's all right. He's all right. Hey, hey, bring it in here from one Paul Francis to another. Come on. It's been, there we go. Here we go. Yeah, we're, a little, we're, a little virtual little, hug. All right. virtual like, hug. A little virtual that. hug. I needed that. All right. Well, hey, look at um, the A's. My, my goal for the A's is not to finish in last place in the last year in Oakland. And maybe the goal for the Rocks is to just, you know, be better than you were last year. You know, last year, the, you know, the final tally was 59 and 103. You know, avoid 100 losses. We'll see if they can do it. I thought they could, but with the maybe, start, and maybe they things, can. Maybe they it, can. It, anything's possible. The second half of the season is a, is a whole new ball game for a lot of people. Uh, the Rockies are better than what their record is, but but it is hard to say that after a series like that because the, there is talent there. Uh, I'm just not confident in the Rockies' ability to get the most out of that talent. Well, the Rockies have two tough opponents coming up: the Phillies, who I think are going to win the World Series. And Cleveland, who is playing out of their mind right now, but a lot of people have overlooked the Rockies, and the Rockies have played well against some people. You know, the A's are going to be playing the Astros, which are that's always a tough order. Then Tampa Bay, uh, in the uh, the matchup between the two teams that desperately need a new stadium. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, well, hey, um, hey, Paul Holden, tell people where they can listen to your great show. Find us locked on Rockies on YouTube. Your subscription helps the show grow. Really appreciate it at LO Rockies on Twitter as well. Follow us there. If you want to follow me, you can get more uh, random stuff. But if you want Rockies talk, follow us at LO Rockies and locked on Rockies on YouTube. And follow us at locked on A's on Twitter, whatever it's called now. And Instagram, I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And also check out Locked on MLB, the show that I've been hosting since 2019. Crying with my fellow Paul Francis. That's Paul Francis Holden of Locked On Rockies. My name is Paul Francis Sullivan. You're listening to Locked On A's. Please, please, I'm begging you, call me Sully. <laughs>